Thank you for joining us today, everyone. Uh, we are going to be talking about personal agility tonight, and we have Maria Bates here. Uh, Maria, I'm going to hand it over to you and let you introduce yourself. Oh, that's always the hard part. I'm just going to start <laughs> by sharing my screen then. So, <clears throat> I am a scrum master, a life coach, a recovering product owner. Once upon a time, I actually compiled code, but it's a dead language. Nobody speaks RPG anymore. So we don't talk about that. <clears throat> but, We're laughing, uh, Maria. We're just all muted. <laughs> so tonight's, tonight's presentation is on personal agility. You know, we all work with Agile in the office, but how do you apply that to your personal life? How do you use the same tools you use at work to accomplish what you're trying to, what you want to accomplish at home? And that's, that's what we're talking about. This conversation will assume that you already know the basics of Agile, that you know what a product owner is, you know what a backlog is. So if, if I use a term that you're not familiar with, raise your hand, drop a note in the chat, come off mute and interrupt me. And I just want to make sure that you understand. So the main, the main point I want to get across tonight is who is managing your backlog? Are you managing your backlog? Is somebody else managing your backlog? Who exactly is managing your backlog? The first thing when you're looking at a project is what is the product? What is your brand? Who are you? You are the product in your own life. You have control over that. Nobody else does. Sometimes it seems like other people have control over us, but no, you have control over how, what you do, how you react. There may be consequences to what you do, but you are your own product and you have control of that. So what is your brand? Who are you? And then the next question is, do others see your brand differently? Have you done some 365 feedback to see how other people see you? Have you asked your family, asked your coworkers? When they think of you, what's the first word they think of? And if they're coming up with words that have nothing to do with how you, you think you're portraying yourself, There's a disconnect there and something needs to shift. And usually what needs to shift is you. So if your brand and what your target brand is, is not what other people are seeing, what features do you need to add to your backlog? What steps do you need to take? to move to where you are trying to be and where you want to be. Is that making sense to everybody so far? Yes, makes sense. I haven't thought of myself that way, but yeah. Okay. It makes sense. So this is designed to be interactive. This is what happens when you get a coach speaking. Okay, so please feel free to come off mute, ask questions, answer questions if you feel comfortable to answer the questions because some of these will get a little personal and I can understand if you don't want to share that with an audience that you don't know yet. So what does your personal backlog look like? What is your why? To use the Simon Sinek phrase. And when you think about it, is it your why or is it somebody else's why? You know, 
all my life, I was told, you're going to come into the family business. You're going to come into the family business. You're going I was a claims processor at 16. I was a medical claims auditor at 25. Tried to go into sales and the family said, oh, women don't sell. Let me tell you, that's a bad stat because women are the top salesmen in most companies when women are allowed to sell in companies. So what is your why? For the first 15 years of my career, my why was somebody else's. And then I realized, I don't really like insurance, but I like tech. I like programming the computers. I like designing the algorithms behind the, behind the claims processing systems. And so I shifted. And I started taking the classes that I needed to get to where I wanted to be. I got my MBA. I learned how to program in RPG. Made it through Y2K. And I started being a product owner and a scrum master. And that's where I fell in love with Agile and realized that at work, we often say, if you want a project to succeed, you use Agile. Well, if you want a goal to succeed, why not use Agile? So looking at your backlog, we all have goals. And sometimes there are these pie in the hot, high in the sky goals and those are the ones I say do you need a telescope to see those the ones that are so far off that you've lost sight of what the first step is and then how distant are your timelines if you are 28 years old and flipping burgers and wanting to be a millionaire by 30 let me tell you you're probably not going to make that one So are you using realistic timelines? Looking at what your goals are and looking at the steps that need to be done, do you have enough time to accomplishment, accomplishment or this is where you as the product owner maybe need to talk to you as the team and say, um, we have an unrealistic expectation here. Let's have a reality check. So the team sets the when on development, on, on a software project, right? So when you're looking at your backlog and looking at what needs to be accomplished and looking at the timelines, sometimes they seem like huge, but sometimes it's not the timeline that's huge, it's that chunk that needs to be done. And, you know, like Da Vinci Code, Sophie was always asked, her grandfather always asked her, Sophie, what's the next step? What's the next step? So looking at those big, huge, chunky monkey goals, the big elephants, how do you break them down? So one of the first things I like to do when I'm coaching people is let's do some visualization. Everybody go ahead and close your eyes and picture your life after you've accomplished that big, hairy, sky, pie in the sky goal. That one that seems forever off that you just don't think you're, you're getting any closer to. Picture your life after you've accomplished that goal. Just close your eyes for a moment and visualize that. You know, in my case, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on a veranda of a beautiful home, watching the sunset with my husband next to me, dogs at our feet, knowing that there's nothing on, there's nothing on the plan tomorrow. We can do whatever we want. So step back. 
what was the final obstacle in your way to accomplishing that goal? What was the obstacle before that one? Step back through the obstacle before that one. What were the stories and tasks that you needed to take that first step? As you step back from that accomplished goal to the very beginning, what did you need to do to get to where you were in that dream? So if you look at your to-do list of your goals today, have you broken down that goal into stories and tasks? You know, practically everybody I know has a weight related goal. They either want to gain weight or they want to lose weight. So looking at that weight related goal, if I were as a team member going to take that goal into my sprint, would I say it met, met a definition of ready? Do I know what needs to be done to accomplish, accomplish that goal? If you were at work and somebody handed you that feature, would you take it into a sprint or would you say, ah, oh, we need to refine this one a little bit more? Do you need somebody to refine it with you? Is this making sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, how sometimes it, it's hard to uh, understand the, the consequence of actually achieving those behind the sky goals. But yeah, yeah think, thinking about them is important probably more important than we, we realize. Yeah. Well, and the thing is too, that some of those pie in the sky goals, a lot of times we don't, if we're not thinking, we think, oh, it'd be great to be there. But we don't think about the obstacles that it takes to get there. And it's when you think about the obstacles that you have to overcome, that sometimes those goals shift a little. And you wonder, wait, is this my goal or is this somebody else's goal? Is this a society goal? Or is this really something I want to do for me? Um, T.D. Jakes is a great motivational preacher in the Midwest. And he, he says a lot of times people don't realize that sometimes when you do accomplish what you want to accomplish, it sometimes means leaving people behind. And he, he does a lot of um, work in the projects in the Midwest. And he, he tells the story of one lady who came in and said, I'm going to get a divorce. And T.D. Jakes looks at him and says, but you've got such a great marriage. What's wrong? Well, he's taking me out of the projects. He bought a house. And Jakes just kind of looks, looks at her and says, well, didn't you want to get your kids out of the projects? And she says, yeah, but that's not the way I wanted to do it. And it was basically a disconnect in, hey, we've been talking about accomplishing this goal, but all of the steps, leaving some of the people behind that weren't coming with you on that path. That can be a hard thing. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't think about when they think about their goals. So that's why I usually tell people, picture what your life is like after you've accomplished it and then step back through the obstacles. What changed? What in your life needed to change? But if we step, start with the first step, 
how do we prioritize those first steps? How do you prioritize your backlog? Agile principle number 10, maximize work not done. Stephen Covey often talked about this, this type of uh, matrix, and it's actually called an Eisenhower matri matrix. It was used by President Eisenhower when he was deciding what his day looked like. You've got your urgent and important items. These are the things that absolutely, that absolutely need to be done and your best thing is do it now. These are the ones that cannot wait, cannot be put off. These are the urgent things that move you forward right now. But if it's important and not urgent, sometimes if it's those pie in the sky goals that we're kind of afraid to, we tend to put them off. But the not urgent important things Sometimes, sometimes you can't get those back. Time with your kids when they're small. That base, going to that baseball game, going to the football game. Now that sports are opening up, you know, after a year of pandemic, priorities have shifted a little. And we are spending more time with our families. Um, I happen to know two women that use their pandemic time to learn coding. And when they were called back into the restaurant, they're like, yeah, no, we're doing something else now. But it took the time, it took having the time to be able, it, it took making the time. Because we all have the same amount of time, it's just how we all, all use it. So things that are urgent and not important, delegate. Who can do those for, do it for you? You know, if you have teenagers in the home, why are you doing any of the household chores? You know, taking the time to teach them and help them to understand how to do them. And sometimes they won't be done to your level of satisfaction, but hey, that's part of delegating, right? You can always QA the work and send them back to do it again. Things that are not urgent, not important. Those are the ones that Covey says delete, eliminate them. I've also had somebody tell me that time that, time that was wasted, that was enjoyed may not have been wasted. Maybe you needed that downtime. So maybe that's one of those not urgent, important things that needs to be scheduled as downtime. So still, still with me here, clear as mud? Yeah, makes, makes sense, Maria. Okay, so the not urgent important things are the ones that we have a tendency to put off. And we usually Always. replace them with, yeah, and we replace them with things that should be on the delete list. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. So it's, it's a matter of just making sure that we have those priorities in place. And I'll admit that there have been times when I'm playing Animal Crossing going, this isn't actually doing me any good. My kids aren't online because Animal Crossing was how we kept in touch with each other during pandemic because they don't live with me anymore. And we were, if we were all on Animal Crossing together, we would go visit each other's islands and play with each other and talk to each other. And that was great. But now that we're not doing that anymore, there's no point in me playing Animal Crossing. So the pro one of the problems is we as people have a tendency to want to do all the things and do them now if we're going to start improving. Think of those weight loss goals. The moment you decide you are going to do a weight loss goal, usually you start doing all the things, all the things at once. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to do, and you start, and you start listing everything you're going to do, and you're going to do it all right now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there, right? So that's where capacity planning comes in. 
So guess what? You can't do it all right now. Pick one. Just pick one. So basically, the way I structure my days in order to accomplish things is I pick three main goals for the day. There are three things I'm going to accomplish today. This more, to give you an idea today, it's giving this speech. At work, we were having a meeting regarding definitions, and I wanted to make sure that I touched base with all of my team after that meeting to make sure they understood what was going on and see if they needed anything more. And then after this meeting, the other thing that I need to accomplish is I am spending some time with my husband because for the last few days, I have told, told him, look, I don't have time. I've got to get this speech done. So I need to take care of some of that not urgent, very important stuff after this. And my headset just decided it's going to die. You okay, Maria? Okay. So, yeah, I forgot to plug in my cordless headset last night. So, capacity planning, one thing at a time. Okay, when we're doing Agile, do we work on every single story at the same time? Or do we pick the most important and prioritize, and we work on that story until one and done is, is it's, and then we go to the next? Same with accomplishing your goals. Same with accomplishing your goals. Don't try and do all of it. Do some capacity planning. Decide what your personal whip limits are. You know, some people can ha handle, we're going to do two stories at the same time. It's still not optimal. Multitasking does not work. So the best thing is really pick, this week I am working on th this, this is my focus. This week, my focus is on my physical health. But I also need to do these things to manage my relationship as well. Is it one of those three things? One, is, that, is working on those, are, is it one of your three main goals for today to hit those points? I don't know anybody that can, can handle over five important things in a day. There's a, maybe a lot of not important things. You know, we've all, okay, everybody's seen the example where the guy brings in the bottle and he puts in the, the big rocks and then he puts in the little rocks and then he pours sand in and then he pours water in until the jar, jar is completely full. And he, then he asks the, the class, so what, what did we prove here? And some, somebody says, oh, there's always room to fit more in. And the, you get, he get, the professor gets lots of feedback. But the one answer he was looking for is always do the big rocks first. Because if you had put the sand and the water and the pebbles in and then tried to put in the big rocks, there's no space for them. So that's why those three main goals for the day, and those three main goals should be moving you towards your end goal. What is your end goal? What is the next step towards that pie in the sky goal that you've broken down and you now know which, which, what way you're going? Okay, we've talked about doing the work. We've talked about prioritizing the backlog. What's the next thing in, in Agile? It's all about collaborate, deliver, and then reflect. Take time to reflect on your prog progress. If you've accomplished the first four or five steps on the goal, evaluate. Do you still want the goal? Is this really your goal? It's amazing how many times when you start getting into something, if you do not know your why, if, you, if you're doing this for somebody else and you don't know your why and you're not bought in on the why, you may not really want the goal. And you know what? That's fine. Find something you do want. 
but if you're but if you're giving up on the goal just because it's tough or you don't you can't think out what the next step is then maybe that's time to ask for help find somebody who can mentor find somebody who can help you with the, the next step maybe it's time to skill up find something that you need to that somebody who can help you learn but take the time to reflect on your progress what worked what didn't and then reward success and what will you do differently that mini retro so I used to run an agile household my kids didn't realize it my husband didn't realize it but Sunday night we would do sprint planning and retrospective we called it planning the week and I had a Kanban board on my kitchen on my kitchen door where the kids had their chores and you were had it to to be to you had swim lanes for each child and you had a whole list of things to do and then it went into the swim lane when they started doing it and then they would stick it in done and then if everything ma made it from doing to done we'd go do fun things on the weekend we'd have rewards um, also there were some some chores that had dollars attached to them so that that's how you earned your allowance was these chores have dollars attached to them and you know whoever gets to that chip that chore first that's who gets paid for it that's clever it works it works and the thing is that you re there's chores that have to be done every week you just put them back in the, the in the to do every every morning every every monday some things worked some things didn't uh, we learned that reusing the stickies didn't always work because certain people would initial them or certain people would do the work and put them in their done column and then somebody else would come and move them to their done column. So we, that's why we discovered you had to initial stickies or else somebody would try and claim credit for your work. So we discovered that during our retrospective where we talked about what worked this week and what didn't work this week and what did we adjust so one of the things we adjusted is when you move the job to active you claim it by initialing your sticky or in the case of the smaller kids we had stickers that you'd put on your sticky so if it had a fish it was james's so just taking that time to make sure you have that retrospective Hey, Maria, can you maybe give an example of a personal why? Just so, at least I'm, I think okay. I know, but. Yeah, so a personal why. I, there, okay. There are some of the things that I have, that I do because, okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to pick one that's not too personal because a lot of times your whys get to be very, very personal. And frankly, I don't know you all enough to share that with you. No, I understand. Just um, hypothetically speaking. Okay. So, well, let me take one that's dear to my heart. My, I have a dyslexic son and a, and a dyslexic husband. So, working with dyslexia programs was is very important to me, and making sure that the schools are aware of dyslexia and working with teachers and dyslexia education now that my now that my kids are out of school it's maybe not as critical as it used to be but there were a lot of things that i did to educate people and to work with teachers to help them understand dyslexia and bless henry winkler for writing the the hank zipser series because i cannot tell you how many times i handed out the first book of that series to a teacher and said here read this it'll help you understand my son but that was one of the one of my whys is helping making sure that my son and my husband could have a world that they can that they can function and accomplish in 
because until we start treating learning 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 difficulties and different styles of learning in a way that everyone gets an opportunity to learn we're going to have just very it's going to be very hard and difficult for people for people to accomplish what they need to it comes down to that trying to level the playing field for everybody but i rather than trying to level the field by bringing people down i want to bring people that are disadvantaged up which is why i do coaching which is why i do tutoring which is why i did a lot with the schools to help them find different ways to help children learn and one of the things that really worked with us well was with dyslexia is getting american sign language accepted as a language in the schools because for some reason asl just helps dyslexic kids click and it's amazing how reading reading comprehension just went through the roof and i'm i'm off on a tangent here and i'm sorry so <laughs> But um, just finding things that worked was so important for us when my kids were in school. So that was my why, was I need my children to be functioning members of society. And in order to get that, in order for that to happen, I need to find things that the school is not able to do at this time and work through those and get those going. And so we did. And he's now in college, and he's studying sec ops and working for a classified government agency. So, so it must have worked. So, did that answer the question? Yeah, great. Thanks. I have a question, and I don't know if here's the right place for it. So, please feel free to punt it until later. Um, but do you have suggestions on, so you gave an example of sort of um, like a weekly sprint cycle. Mm -hmm. For setting up goals in life, I've found that I still go on a semester-based schedule, even though I'm over God, six or seven years out of college now. Um, is there a time frame that you tend to use for evaluating personal goals? You know what? Honestly, if semester works for you, use it. I just tend to run weekly that with with my with my kids and my household weekly just worked for us I know other people that work monthly and you'll see bullet journals that are that are based on monthly goals the time frame that works best for you is the one that works best for you if semesters are working for you great but I'm willing to bet that within that semester time frame you probably do break things down even further so that basically your feature may be on s s semester level, but you probably have iterations in between. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, actually, I'm curious, do you? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have to do weekly to um, get certain tasks done. I guess when I think about career goals, so yeah, I I think about what do I want to accomplish in the next several months? Is it like learning a new skill and taking a class? Is it um, like something I want to accomplish at work in the next several months? So I tend to need that kind of a chunk. And I think for some like athletic training, um, such as if you're training for a half marathon or a marathon, like that's a maybe an 18 week program. And so that tends to line up in that way. Um, but I only have, I only use the framework because that's what I was used to with school. It kind of breaks down into, you know, fall, winter, and summer. But I yeah. don't think it's a good thing. Yeah. No, no, think about it. Um, do we do quarterly PI planning? Yeah. Oh, so you're already doing your quarterly PI planning for personal stuff. It's a good way of thinking about it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, Honestly, whatever works for you, every team works differently. Every person works differently. But there are usually basic principles behind what we do. So, you know, your scrum master removes blockers. 
Well, if you are the product owner, the scrum master, and the team, that makes it really hard to remove your own blockers. So this is where this is where I really encourage people to, if you are the product owner and the team, find somebody who can be your scrum master or accountability partner. Find a friend, find a, I, I really don't recommend spouses, but if you need to use a spouse. Um, if, you're running, if you're running an agile household, it works really well to have one person be the product owner, one person be the scrum master and alternate those roles on occasion. The kids are the team. So who can help? Who can help with your blockers? You know, because if, if you hit that point where you are just stumbling and you, don't, you can't see the next step, that's when it's time to find somebody. Find somebody who can help you get over that, that hurdle, get over that obstacle. Make sense? So, what are your thoughts? Um, hey, one question. So, yeah. what are your what are your thoughts on um, habit building um, and how it fits into this framework? Um, just because you might need like longer cycles. Yeah. Well, think think about your maintenance tasks at work. How do you fit those into your sprints? Those are your habits. Oh, okay. So just reserve a certain percentage. Yeah. For it, yeah. Yeah, reserve a certain percentage of your capacity for those habits that you're building. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So when we have a big release at work, we have a celebration, right? Usually. Last year was an exception. So reward your wins. Rewards that have worked for me, team activities, family goals or chores deserve a great weekend activity. You know, like I mentioned, we, if the Kanban board, if everything was on done, we went and had fun on the weekends. Intangible rewards. Spend some guilt-free time doing one of the delete activities. You know. Spend two hours gaming because you accomplished what you needed to do. And sometimes tangible re rewards can be a real goal thing. When I accomplish this, I will buy that. So, although it shouldn't be something, if, <laughs> if your tangible reward sabotages what you've been working towards, so, so that if you've been working towards paying off debt and your tangible, tangible reward for paying off all your credit cards is to run your credit cards back up, that may not be the best tangible reward. Maybe you need to pick a different tangible reward for that one. So picking a tangible reward that's in line with what you've been doing. So inspect and adjust. So you have your great plans for the week. You're going to do everything. You're going you're gonna to accomplish everything. And you get to Friday, and it's like, I have accomplished nothing on my list. So that's when it's time to inspect and adjust. Like I said, those Sunday night retros. Why do some root cause analysis? Why didn't you make it to the gym three times this week? Okay, pandemic has, has them all shut down. Okay, obviously can't do much about that. So why didn't you find something you could do at home to exercise? Go down your five whys. Get to your root cause. Is it really a priority? Because if you get down to your five whys, and it's because, well, I just really didn't want to do it because it didn't really mean anything to me. Maybe you need to look at, 
is this really my goal or is this, is this somebody else's? Fear. False expectations appearing real. That's, that's how I grew up looking at fear. False expectations appearing real. But if I actually get this done, I'm going to lose friends. If I actually get this done, the family's going to make fun of me. If I actually get this done, and all those false expectations that you're projecting into the future that may or may not be real. You don't know if they're real until you actually accomplish what you're trying to do. Distractions. That's my big one. I am an expert at distracting myself. So how do I adjust? I have learned that I do not take electronics into the bedroom at all. Or else I will be up all night and get no sleep. So maybe you need to adjust your environment. Maybe you need to do, make other adjustments. If you get to the root cause, what will you adjust? That inspect and adjust is how we improve. The heart of Agile, collaborate, deliver, reflect, and improve. So we talked, I didn't talk a lot about collaborate at the beginning because I talked about you being your own product owner. But we all don't improve in a vacuum. We have people around us, people who depend upon us. And I hope that when you're setting your product backlog together for yourself, that you are collaborating with those that you love and those that care about you. And make sure that you're all on the same page. Because... These are the people that will help you move forward, and they probably need you to help them move forward, too. So let's all move forward together. So after we've inspected and gone to adjust, just know that if you have not, if you have not reached your goal, then something needs to be something needs to change. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but in expecting different results. And that is actually from me to Rita Mae Brown, despite all the Einstein posters that you've seen. Einstein never said it. So if you are doing the same thing and expecting a different result, it's time to step back, inspect again, and say, wait a second. If I'm doing this and expecting a different result, what's the result I'm expecting? What do I need to do to actually get to that result? Eating cupcakes and, and cinnamon knots is not going to help me lose 10 pounds. I don't care who makes them, it's not going to help me lose 10 pounds. So um, we are almost out of time, so we will skip over my personal example. And just go to questions unless you want me to go back to the personal example. I wouldn't mind. Okay, I am a carousel junkie. I love hand carved carousels. Philadelphia Toboggan Company makes the best carousels in the world. Philadelphia Toboggan Company number six runs in Carson County Carousel. It, it runs in Carson County at the fairgrounds and is known as the Carson County Carousel. It is still operating and it only costs a quarter to ride. I had a goal list. For four years, the top thing was ride the Carson County Carousel. And I went to put it on my goal list for the fifth year and I thought, wait a second. Is this really my top priority? It's been here for four years. I'm no closer to seeing it. And I sat down and said, okay, what is it going to take for me to go ride the Carson County Carousel? It's 357 miles away. I could fly. Or my husband relaxes by driving. 
And we hadn't planned a summer vacation yet. So I went down and said, hey, honey, how would you feel about driving across Wyoming to go see the Carson County Carousel? He says, I don't want to see a carousel. I said, yeah, but on the way back, we could go through that slot can canyon near Vernal that you've always wanted to photograph. And he's like, yeah, I'd be willing to drive 376 miles to do that. I'm like, okay, okay, cool. You drive me to the carousel. After the carousel, we'll stop in Vernal, and you can have a week to photograph Canyonlands, the slot canyon you wanted to go, go photograph, and anything you want in Vernal. He's like, cool, okay. So we go to the kids. The kids are like, that's okay. Why don't you two take a trip? We'll stay here and take care of the dogs. They were teenagers. It was cool. So we left the kids home alone. We, co <laughs> we covered Wyoming in a, in a day. There were other slots, spots we could have stopped along on the way, but we were like, nah, we're just going to drive. And I have never been to Nebraska. So my husband actually planned the route so that we would hit Nebraska so I could see the now entering Nebraska, now leaving Nebraska signs. So I can now say I have been to Nebraska, even if it was only for 25 minutes. And I got to ride the Carson County Carousel. So for four, after being on my goal list for four years, I tasked it out, and two weeks later, I had it done. So there's my example. So any, any, any questions, any concerns? Anybody wondering, well, that was nice, but how does it apply to me? No, I think it's a very good example of um, actually making something a priority, deciding to make a priority and involving those, you know, the, the, action, the stakeholders and asking it out. So I think it's a great example. And yeah, thank you for sharing that. So, and it's still one of my favorite trips that we ever wrote, or we ever went on. So, so anyway, there's my contact information. If you want to get in touch with me, ask additional questions. Hey, Murray, I've got some questions. Uh, okay. So, so I'm an old Covey Seven Habits guy. Years ago, it was pretty mm -hmm. popular in the 2000s, even the 90s. Uh, and and the and then his book, of course, was a bestseller, which kind of outlined the steps. A lot of these sound familiar with that, at least like the quadrants and getting things in the right order. Uh, for personal agile, are there resources besides the website, or what would you recommend on finding out, um, you know, details of how to implement in your own life, or or would you recommend things like Covey and stuff like that and so one of my absolute favorite books right now is by B.J. Fogg. It's called Tiny Habits. Okay, I've heard of that one. Yeah. Tiny Habits? Tiny Habits. You know, okay, think about it. In Agile, we do it a step at a time. Baby steps. We don't take giant leaps. We take our, step, we take our teams a step at a time. And so many times with our personal goals, we want to do everything right now. You know, we went the slide, do all the things. No, baby steps. Give yourself whip limits. Don't burn yourself out. So also, as, as Brett mentioned, personal agility. There's a website called Personal Agility. And if you sign up, they will send you a daily, a, a daily reminder of what what was the most important thing you did today? What's your win for today? What's your most important thing for tomorrow? If you have any blockers, who can help? And they will send you that email every day at 5 p.m. And you can just take a moment. You, they'll even let you send it back, let you respond back to them. They, uh, personal agility is also in the process of writing a book. 
and you can get the first couple chapters free if you respond to the, the email that they send. On top of that, I, I, I highly recommend coaching. I do coaching. I can also hook people up with other coaches if you don't want to coach with me. But uh, personal coaching is wonderful for having somebody there who can help you with those five whys and help you with the inspect and adapt and adjust. Because we all have blind spots. And having a coach observe and watch and say, hey, well, think about sports coaches. How many times have you heard of a sports coach telling the player, you know, if you just twisted your wrist this way, or if you just did this one movement, and all of a sudden the game changes. Personal coaching is, is something I really recommend for anybody who really wants to change their game. Well, the trick to me has been how do you how do you find coaches that are not just full of it? I've seen so many people who, oh, I'm a coach now, but their credentials seem like not very impressive. They've so always been like, well, you know, super famous coaches are, you know, not can't pay them, so. <laughs> ask to see some of their, uh, ask, to see talk, ask to talk to some of their clients. How have their clients done with their coaching? Honestly, to, you can have all the credentials in the world, but references mean more. Okay. So, at least that's been my experience. Your mileage may vary. One other question on personal coaching. Do you recommend looking for someone who has experience, like if it's career-wise in your career or personally, like in accomplishing goals that you're interested in or at least understanding that space? I like talking to people who understand what I'm talking about. So that's, that's one of the things I've, I've found that helps with coaches. But then sometimes it's nice to have somebody with a totally fresh approach. Maria, would you you know, like, would, would you, could you even have multiple coaches if you had a career coach and a personal coach? Or is, oh, yeah. I recommend just find one that was a good overall coach. Um, I, I have been through phases in my life where I had a personal trainer and a career coach. Because let me tell you, my career coach was not going to be able to help me with sit-ups. Yeah, right. So, but, you know, I've also been through times where it's like, I am flat broke, and there, I know I need somebody to help me through these situations, in which case, I just ha asked a good friend to be an accountability partner and said, hey, look, this is what I want to accomplish this week. Can I call you Friday? and tell you if I did it or not. And if I didn't do it, will you just ask me why five times? And if, if you think I'm giving you a BS answer, call me on it. And what's been fun is with Jenna and I, we have coached each other multiple times. And she is now a I'm sorry, what? So that's not a bad idea to have an accountability partner. Yeah. Well, and what's cool is Jenna's now a product, a product owner at Discovery, which is where she wanted to be. And I am now a scrum master. So, you know, it worked. Having an accountability partner helped us get to where we wanted to be. So, anything else? Because we are now at 7 o'clock, which is our time block. Well, I'll, I'm sure I'll have more questions because I really like the idea. Um, but yeah, thank you yeah. For, for, for sharing. For your yeah, time. Oh, please email me. If you've got more questions later, email me. 
you've got both my LinkedIn contact and my G and my Gmail account right there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, and then Katrina, um, I think you were going to ask people if there was anybody looking for work or anybody who had jobs. Uh, you're right. I was going to do that at the very beginning. My apologies. Um, if you are looking for a position or have a position open, please feel free to speak up about what you're hiring for or post it in the chat. And we are happy to connect people to positions. Um, it doesn't have to be a DevOps position, um, just whatever you have available. Okay, it looks like somebody's looking for a database person. Yeah, that's me. I'm looking for a Postgres uh, person. Even better if he has programming experience because we want to automate things around it. Awesome. Thank you. If anyone has any information, please shoot it over to Roberto. Yeah, I can provide a, you know, a full job description what we're looking for. But yeah. this is my first uh, DevOps Town meeting. I've been meaning to go to others, but I, you know, I made it a point to be on this one. So We're I didn't happy know what to I have should be. Thank you. Didn't know it. Otherwise, I should have. I would have prepared something to post here. If yeah, you, you want to just, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say you can, and probably Katrina to say this is you could connect with the message the organizers of the meetup and. We'll post it to our group if you want to put full details or contact information. Sweet, thank you. We'll do. Awesome. Um, and my uh, the state is looking for contractors for uh, everything under the sun right now: automation engineers, DevOps engineers, software engineers, um, everything. So. If you have anyone who's looking, uh, feel free to reach out again to those of us at the meeting organizers and we can get you connected with someone who can get you those positions. Which company is looking for contractors? Uh, the state, uh, you, the, I can't even say my own company name, <laughs> Utah State Board of Education. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. And, and likewise, uh, uh, the state is I think all the all the divisions are moving to the cloud, so they are looking for AWS experience, uh, programming experience, uh, database, a lot of DevOps roles. That's kind of a new field that they're trying to get expertise on. Um, same same as what Katrina was mentioning. So, what are they going to a public cloud provider, or, or in which one? Oh, which cloud provider? Well, the state is uh, a respecter of no cloud provider. They've decided to use all three. So we've got oh, that's awesome. AWS, Azure, and Google. We didn't want to offend anyone, I guess. So we're oh, that's, proudly yeah, supporting that's, all three. It's tricky. Yeah, at the school board, we are Azure. And my project is mostly AWS and Google. Awesome. Anyone else? Um, if you do have openings or you're looking for an opening and don't want to say it here in public forum, feel free to again message the meeting organizers and we can get your information out or see if we have anything to match you if you don't want us to just spam things out. Um, we're happy to help where we can. Our next month's meetup is actually going to be all about the job search um, and how to really optimize your job search during COVID and how to do interviews. Um, so we look forward to seeing you all again next month. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. So thanks, awesome. Katrina and Maria. Yeah, thanks. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>